It's recorded live from a bedroom in Santa Clarita, California. It's the mightiest nightly show. With your host, Joanne Jeanette. Garage Band app. Tonight's guest, Kristen Gall. A special performance by Kristen Gall. An after party with Kristen Gall. And another performance by Kristen Gall. Now here's your host, Joanne Jeanette. You look great. You have makeup on. I don't have any on. I well, oh, I, was there, bored, I, I was bored and also I have a microphone too. Should I put oh, my neat. Yeah, I like it. Should I put it in the shot? More profesh? Yeah. yeah. All right. I never know what's more profesh is like if it's hidden or if it's I don't know. I'm using a sun lamp. You know these depression sun lampy thingies? Oh amazing. I totally need one, but I um, found one like in the back of the, you know, the closet. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll use that. I don't need a spotlight. I uh, don't mind the mess. <laughs> Just like good. this is my desk area. It used to be empty, but you know, the last what year and a half that we've been like, we have to work from home. It's like all this stuff sort of has accumulated. I'm going to clean all this out this weekend. And I cleaned one half of the bedroom because the pandemic just everything was being at home. So how are you holding up? I'm. I'm good. Um, I will say that I have purposely put myself in a corner so that you can't see my crap. Okay. Um, grab so, something, grab anything, grab the first silly thing that you find. Uh, this is like, let's make a deal or what's that? What's that game show where that you go through your purse? Oh, I love that. Oh my, my gosh. area wig. I've seen you in this in a photo. Haven't yeah. I? Yeah. And that's I, good. When I, when I would play the princesses, um, you know, usually I, I can borrow like a blonde wig, but you know, these, these long mermaid wigs are kind of hard to come by. So to get your own is what I figure it, it was a good uh, investment. Okay. So, um, what are you doing now as far I know you're working, but what are you doing as far as acting? And I'm in my PJs to see, so you know, I just threw oh. a sweater over my I'm, pajamas. I definitely, I definitely put a shirt over, uh, you know, a tank top, and I have pajama bottoms on. Okay. No bra, like we're fully like this is all up here. We're working up right, here. right. We're not working down here. So, um, do you have the going out bra, which has been this past two years my staying in bra, mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. of the pandemic. Yeah, uh, right now I am teaching uh, kids after school. So, you are. yeah, so for the most part, I'm like, you know, I'm not in a school eight hours a day, which right. is, I don't know if I can handle that. Um, actually, I know I could not handle that. So, right. Like, it's a list off. of passwords. Go on. Yeah, a list yeah. of passwords. That's good. Just yeah. leave that out. Okay, go um, on. But, like, yeah. Um, uh, I, I definitely have respect for the teachers who have been dealing with this, you know, in the various capacities because I did not do like enrichment over Zoom or anything like I, I did not. I know that there probably were people who were, but um, I, I just was not. And now I'm back in schools with a mask on. Very cool. Usually outside, except when it's raining. And, you know, whenever we're inside, we have a mask on. Usually when I'm outside, I have a mask on. So, and I'm vaccinated and boosted. And so you are boosted. Grandma. I have to get the booster. That's something I that, that's on the list. Cause now with the Omicron variant, I'm starting to get worried again where I wasn't, I didn't care before. I was like, I'll be fine. But now I'm starting to get worried because I'm doing news again. And mm -hmm. every news story is Omicron, 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 Omicron. Omicron. I'm like, oh, maybe I should go get that booster. Well, yeah. I mean, my grandma just got boosted yesterday. Um, so it was kind of like the opposite uh, of like the first vaccines, you know, it's like, if you can get to it, get to it. But, you know, like, 
don't put it off too long because yeah. you never know. And, you know, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm like, I'll, you know, I'll get all of, I'll get a collection of vaccines. I'll get every stamp on my passport uh, as far as the vaccine goes, because it's like when I got sick from, you know, from the vaccine, I was like, oh man. Yeah, I, I did still, too. I would yeah, so be hard. in the hospital. I would so be in the hospital easy. Like. How many um, days did it take? It took me like two days until I started feeling okay again. But oh, I do yeah. understand why the anti-vaxxers don't want to. I, you know, I get it because it's it's like someone's forcing you to do something with your body. So I'm like, that's your thing if you want to do that. But, you know, I, I don't know how I feel. I, I changed my feeling on it back and forth. It's like, for me, I did get it, right? But I do it for the same reason that sometimes I'll pray to God, right? What what is right. it? What have I got to lose? But I right. do kind of understand where they're coming from on some level, you know? I'll say that it's unlike abortion being, you know. See, and I think of it the same way. I think, well, I don't tell people if they can the or can't. You don't think so? It's a false, it's a false equivalency. And I'll tell you why. Okay. Because um, you know, if I choose to have an abortion or not, it really mostly affects me. If you choose to get a vaccine or not, it doesn't just affect you, it affects everybody around you. And you are, you are the super spreader at that point. And here's the thing, like, even if you are one of those magical people that is asymptomatic, you're going to go ahead and spread that to somebody who will probably die from it. Because you can't control who gets it and who doesn't once you are a carrier. And it's comes down to this societal contract. You know why all of those? Here's my kitty. Oh, cat. kitty. Hi, kitty. Uh, this is Princess. Hi, Princess. Um, yes. Oh, yes, she is. She's going to go up in the window now. Okay. Um, or she's going to be uh, stealing the spotlight. That's fine. Um, it's a societal duty, it's a responsibility for everybody to do their part. It's like paying taxes. You know, looking at you billionaires, do your fucking part. Um, but like, you know, it's the cat you, is too. The cat says, do your part. Yeah. yeah. Well, she said, I got my vaccines. I have to get my cat vaccinated. She doesn't get a choice. This is true. I mean, I got it, but I get I I I just let people have their autonomy. Um, and the people that I know that are anti vaxxers, I don't actually um I don't work with them and I don't see them every day. So it's, you know, I'm not as passionate. I guess if I was working with someone who wasn't, I don't know. I don't know how I'd feel. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I, I, I go think, back and forth. I mean, I kind of get it, but I don't know. Uh, for me, I just went and got it for, it was no brainer. I mean, you could yeah. have that discussion forever, but it's like, oh, there's something that could prevent me from getting ill. I'm going to go do it. Now get me uh, shipped with micro whatever. So, well, no, I'm not doing that. I don't want to microchip in my body. That's all conspiracy theory. That's but all see, shit. But they said Bo Bohemian Groves was a conspiracy theory, and that's okay, look, real. That there are some conspiracy theories. Look, there's a difference between a conspiracy and a conspiracy theory. Well, one is true and one's not. Or yeah. one's an idea. And what, well, okay, so like, what would you call Bohemian Groves? Because these dudes, these grown men, go out into the, into the wilderness, and they do a fake bonfire ceremony. And I don't know what they do. And they get all drunk on like Pap's Blue Ribbon. And I don't know what they do. And they, they, you know, pee with, you know, they like pee their name into leaves. Like they do all these weird things. And just that because, turned out to be true. Just because Bohemian Grove turned out to be true does not mean QAnon is true. Oh, no, no. Yeah, that's, no, I get that. That's such a false equivalency. That is, that is totally like saying that my, my body, my choice and about the vaccine it's like no you can well, the QAnon, they're not eating babies they weren't eating babies for what was that oh my, uh, what was that thing uh, adrena something oh q I, had the they were like saying all over online it, online everywhere it was like that they're taking these i don't know what it was is it blood or something of babies it wasn't true but it's but it is true that the people of hollywood like eat each other like that is like that's true, but they're not eating babies. They eat each other. Well, pretty much. I mean, they devour each other. And they're always scratching at each other, and you know, like it's it's all toxic anyway. 
I haven't watched TV in over a year, so. Um, well, I think we're getting our like metaphors mixed up because like. <laughs> Don't you like my metaphors? Okay, like, go on. Uh, you know, the snake eating itself, the Ouroboros, you know, I think that you're referring to of Hollywood is not the same as like people eating babies. Like. Uh, Which no one was ever doing, by the way. Were they? No. Oh, I, please don't tell me that turns out to be true. Okay. The, first of all, they're probably delicious. <laughs> Second of all, I don't, I don't, I've never heard. <laughs> um, I love you. I like that. Well, if I, He's I mean, joking, I'm joking, by the way. I'm just, but I'm going to share the screen. So you have to tell me if you can see this. Okay, hon. Okay. Um, where is it? Oh, first we have to spin, spin the wheel of trash. Can you see oh, okay. the wheel of trash? Okay, so we're gonna spin the wheel. It's right. spinning, it's spinning, it's spinning. Okay. This is what you have to do. I have to eat Doritos with orange juice? I don't mm -hmm. think I have Doritos at home. And then this is what I have to do. Spinny, spinny, spinny. I think I have orange juice, but I don't think I have Doritos. Oh boy. We'll spin it one more time just for fun. I didn't know I, there was big a shiny money, big money. That's not bad. That's actually not bad. I've done that. That's Three gospel singers. Um, but we actually, but I, but the whole thing is about how Satan ends up being my best friend. And then I end up getting into a relationship with Satan and then we uh, break up and we are co-parenting oh a my. chihuahua named Bubbles. I feel like if I'm going to have a dog with Satan, it's not going to be a chihuahua, but that's cute. I like it. Well, I was trying to show a different, I was trying to show a different side of Satan. Not everybody sees that. Knows side. the softer side. Yeah. Not everybody, you know, not everybody gets to see that side of, of, you know, Satan right. being like a dog dad, you know? So I, I just feel like, oh, that's very nice of you. I um, put badass because you are, you really are. You're a tough well, fraud. Well, yeah, and look at me showing off my straight spine. Um, this is what this is the next photo. Look at this right here. Yes, that was um, about eight years ago. Uh, eight eight years ago in a month now. Um, that was from my scoliosis surgery. I had a pretty bad, pretty bad curve. That curve was something like uh, it started out at like 45 and it ended up being like 56, almost 60 degrees. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm talking about like, you know, geometry degrees and stuff. I mean, that is just, Kristen, that yeah. blows my mind that you got through this. Well, and, you know, it was at that point that I was just like, screw it, cut me open, you know? Right. I yeah. was it was it painful. It was painful then. Oh, yeah. To live. Okay. So it was much more painful to live with the curve than it was to live go through the surgery thing. Yeah, live through it. I mean, obviously it was obviously the surgery itself was painful, but um it was a temporary pain. It was like an intense temporary pain and I had really good drugs which, you know, when I'm when I'm not in surgery, I'm in pain anyway and I don't get those sweet drugs. So uh, you know, it was like definitely, uh, tough because I had to be on like Percocet yeah. and, uh, Soma, which is a muscle relaxer. So, you know, I definitely had like, uh, you know, the nausea and the other digestive issues that come with being on oh, opioids. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but you know, um, it well, was, luckily you didn't get addicted to them. Oh yeah. Well, it was, I mean, it made me feel sick mostly. And, uh, it was not, it's not my drug of choice, let's just say. Uh, so it was, it was one of those things where I could definitely see how people could get dependent on that because right. I was hooked up to a morphine drip in the hospital. Uh, and you know, I just kind of wanted enough to sleep. And yeah. You know, that little, um, uh, on the picture on the left, my little pink dress, I that, love little, it. that little hip, I think that's the right hip, the, it's my left hip. And that was, um, you know, that was the one that was kind of like uh, suffering a little bit. Um, it was not as, there was one side of my body that was very curvy. 
And the other side, that was not yeah. as curvy. Wait, these so, are not for us. Wait, these are just, I forgot I had these in here. This is what we grew up looking at every time we went to the grocery store. And then they, yeah. then they wonder why these girls are in these hospitals, like starving themselves to death. Because this oh, is yeah. constantly, look, you don't have boobs. Here, please your man. That was another one. Sex, your men. Here's the, be the sex that men crave. Here, your guy's body. How to, to like, it, everything is about serving the boys. You look oh, great yeah. here. I think this is a great Thank shot. You. Um, so I took a shot of it so that I could um, spotlight it, light it, because I really like this. Um, beautiful. These are beautiful. These are fan you. fantastic. I love your hair. Thanks. I think I'm going to go back to doing the pink hair again, too. Me, too. I'm that's why I'm growing out my hair again. I was like, you I miss okay. my wacky hair. Yeah, I like it. Like, okay, kittens. So you you uh, you have the rescue thing that you yeah. do. So tell me about this one. Um, so I kind of took a little bit of a break because I realized like, you know, I had to kind of get myself in a place where I could be uh, more helpful to the rescue community because right now I cannot like foster or really do much of the rest of the rescuing that I usually do. So right now we're kind of, I will say that I am in a resource, uh, a resource discovery phase where it's like, how can we get ourselves, how can we rescue ourselves first and then focus on the kittens? Um, so that's, that's where I'm personally at right now. But, uh, when I was pretty upset about the whole Trump getting elected thing, that's when I started looking at getting into kitten rescue because I was just kind of feeling sort of guilty. Like, well, what did I, what could I do <laughs> to make the world better seeing as how we just pulled out of the Paris Agreement. Right, which, I remember this. Yeah, you were telling I'm, me. Yeah, I'm so glad that we're back. Um, you know, and not that like saving kittens is gonna solve global warming or anything, but you know, they say what, when you're feeling helpless. Uh, right, you're supposed to do something for someone else. Yeah, yeah start, start in your community, I, I think is like what they say is like, you know, when you're, when you're feeling helpless, help somebody in your community. Now, I don't know about you, but the pandemic made me look at every celebrity I ever liked differently. And I am yeah. now so, I'm not like, I, I don't feel, think we should like bully them or anything, but I just don't get the hype anymore. I'm like, I don't care. And, and I'm not making strangers wealthy because we have the technology now that I meet someone like you, you're very talented. You do live shows. You have, you have your own videos. You have things. I'd rather support people that I know now instead of make people in a box who don't know I exist wealthy. So I was just at Universal Studios a couple of weeks ago uh, for my birthday, and I met this guy, Zach, and he does music, and I listen to his stuff. And when I click on his Spotify stuff, he only gets a couple pennies. He said he had a song that had like 30 million hits. He only made like 900 bucks that year. Oh, man. So, you know, but, but this is how my thinking is now. Why should yeah. I lend my brain, my attention, my money, my, to the creative artwork of people that don't care about me? They're getting wealthy. They have beach houses. They have seven or eight cars. I'm not doing that anymore. If I don't know you, then I don't care. So this whole thing with like celebrity culture, I'm not saying bully them. Don't do that. But there's, you know, so many commercial television stations, so many streaming services, so many this, like I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. I, I definitely think that, you know, social media in a lot of ways killed it has kind of democratized uh, entertainment in a way that yeah. you can find people like we found each other. Yeah. Um, I go to live theater like every other weekend I go or there's I don't need to even go to improv in Hollywood to see all the big names because, you know, they're all doing the stand up for like 25 bucks. Right. These big name people, you can just go in there. Sometimes it's free, like on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I'm not even going there because the bowling alley, we got this guy locally. He's like anybody that wants to do it here. So I just have to go down the street and these are fantastic. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I used to host an open mic and, uh, you know, like that's, those are the people who are, who are working their stuff out and, you know, they, they're the ones who are still working towards their dream. 
Mm -hmm. and who, if you support, it really makes a difference. Absolutely. And, you know, it's like shopping on like Etsy or like somebody's small business, you know, the dollar, to the dollar goes way further. Yeah. You're, you're helping somebody feed their family versus helping right. a billionaire buy their second yeah. millionth house. Exactly. Exactly. Um, now here's the funny thing since I moved here from Chicago. So I'm, you've been here a couple of years, right? Cause you're from, are you from the Midwest originally or East I'm coast? I'm from here. I'm oh, from you are Indiana. from here. Oh, so, okay. So you've always run into celebrities, but that's like something new for me. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, not, well, not that we didn't have them in Chicago, but I'm saying you, I, I ran into Jay Leno once, you know, when I was walking into my work and in fact, he was doing one of his car things and they blocked my entrance and I, and, and they were filming and they said, ma'am, you can't come through here. I said, yes, I can. Cause I have to, I have to walk through here to get to that door, to get up to my job. Cause I have to be on the radio in about six and a half minutes. So I'm going through here. And then they were like, well, this is, this is, you'll have to go around the building because it's blocked off. I said, nobody's filming anything. And then I, so they're like, but Mr. Leno, and this is what he did. He went, I don't know. I don't know. She seems okay. Let her go. Let her go. I don't know. You know I mean? And then I just walked <laughs> through, I just walked right through because I was like, I'm not going around the building to, if you guys aren't filming anything. And they started yelling at me. I was like, sue me, like do it. Cause they weren't filming. And I'm not going to walk all the, I'm not going to walk a city block. You know what I mean? Just to go get up to my job. Cause they did that all the time in Chicago. It used to aggravate me. I was like, come on, other people exist other than, you know, people film and stuff. But like here, who did I run into? I have now seen Mark Hamill, who is Star Wars, Luke Skywalker, yes. like four times. This is funny to me because I'm not a Star Wars fan. You know, it's just not my thing. Not saying I didn't watch it in 1976 or whatever, but I was five, six. Right. Okay. And I always like Carrie Fisher, the other stuff that she did, like her right. books and she was in, you know, like Drop Dead totally. Fred and this thing and that. I always liked all of that, but I wasn't into Star Wars. So it's so funny that I keep running into Mark Hamill. And I think of all the people that would be like on the floor licking his shoe you know, right. I've seen him buy chips. I saw him at the Barnes and Noble. It's like, okay, he's following me. Right. <laughs> no, he's not, but it's wasted on me, you know, yeah. cause I'm like, no, totally. so it's like, who, like, who would you freak out if you ran into? Uh, Gwen Stefani probably. Really? Okay. Yeah. She's okay. like, it that's your, me. that's your it person. Yeah. Well, she's like my, like, ever since I was like, like young, young, like, we a wee lass yeah um, i was somewhere and the who's that post malone guy he was there oh yeah i don't know him. see i don't <laughs> either and but he's got all the tattoos so i was at this right. place and i was with this older gentleman and he said yeah that's post malone and there's a big crowd and i said I, see that it's it's like it doesn't mean anything to me and even my kids are like oh oh yeah we heard of him i saw uh kurt russell mm -hmm. do you know who that is he might is be it? too. Okay. You do know who that is. Um, that was, um, at the gas station over on sunset Boulevard. So I thought that was funny. I looked up, I went, Oh, uh, uh, do you know who Elliot Gould is? Yes, I do. Oh, you do. Okay. I saw him at a CVS, the guy from the barn, the ranch, the something oh, Not Ashton Kutcher, the other guy, oh, all uh, guy, white hair, Sam Elliott. That's his name. I saw him yeah. pulling out of his driveway in Malibu unaware that he cool. I, I mean I assumed he lived there because I was driving through Malibu through some residential street and he I went that guy looks familiar and then who else did I see uh Joe Pesci in a convertible and you in but it was like everyone look at me everyone look at me you know that was very funny yeah I'm trying to think of who else I've seen well it's like you know. know uh I Probably the weirdest celebrity interaction I've ever had was I was eating a sandwich on Venice Beach and I did not recognize him at the time because I, I don't know, I just had not seen him in anything like recently. And to me, he was just kind of a scary Mexican guy. Danny Trejo came up to me and asked me for a bite of my sandwich. And I was like, he just asked you like a stranger, may I have a bite of your sandwich? I think he thought I knew who he was oh. and like, that would be funny. Like, I think he was like, Hey, <laughs> Bill know? Murray used to do stuff like that. Or he would just walk up and take people's food out of their mouth and they would turn around and they go, wait a minute, you're, and he's like, no one will believe you <laughs> and right, he'll yeah. walk up with their food. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> that can backfire. 
that stuff like that can backfire. Danny Trejo did not steal my sandwich. And I, if I could go back in time, I would give him a bite of my sandwich. But I was, uh, did not know who he was at the time. <laughs> I don't think I would either. I probably wouldn't. And I, I was know. just like, I was just like, scary man. Okay, so we're going to, um, you know, just like as a woman thing? in general, every man is scary. Yeah. Oh, what this is this is thing fun. that you're okay, doing? So this is actually a picture of me and my friend who actually passed recently. Oh, she died. Um, I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. Oh um, my gosh, honey. How old? She, I think she was like 34. Oh God. She got uh cancer. Oh, does she have any kids? She just gave birth oh, to geez. like a little baby. Okay. And she, she was a comedian and she was hilarious. And she and I uh, were actually cast as this two headed baby deer uh, from a news story. Uh, and so for like a late night show, we were playing the two headed baby deer and we were, ironically enough, uh, now that she's passed, we were begging for somebody to kill us. Uh, um, because, ooh, yeah. you know, we were uh, a two-headed baby deer. And I am so sorry. I had no idea. We'll move on to the next thing. It's all good. You're singing good. here. You're singing Jess here. And you laughing. Jess is laughing at us being uncomfortable about I'm it. sure she <laughs> is. She had a dark sense of humor, I'm sure. You're singing here. What are you singing? I'm actually playing Gwen Stefani. You right are. Here. Oh yeah, it looks like her. Yeah, I get it. Uh, I'm playing Gwen Stefani, and uh, my friend Ian Zandi, who's a wonderful comedian, um, he's playing Gavin Rossdale. And okay. uh, yeah, I totally see it. And so this was Valentine's head. <laughs> yeah, this was a Valentine's Day show, and um, we changed the words of. Uh, glycerin glycerin from, yeah glycerin to valentine's um was like 24 then i think i was 24 when that came out well and you know and this is after they'd broken up so this yeah. is like uh oh yeah bush was huge for like two and a half years like huge absolutely. and then it was and so was uh stone temple pilots and then it was like who oh yeah i remember them okay go on uh yeah, so I mean, this is just a sketch that we did for a Valentine's Day show that, you know, one of the uh, themes of the show was that celebrity couples were going to drop by uh, and, you know, make cameos. And we were one of the celebrity couples, even though we were a celebrity ex couple. And, uh, we, you know, we say you look good. Valentine. You're professionally, um, you, you're uh, classically trained. You, so I know that. Now, what, what are you singing recently? Because you know what I've been practicing in my car? What have you of been all practicing? Of all things, um, Godspell. I've been revisiting <laughs> day by day. Uh, day by day. You know that I, one? Uh, oh, I, I don't know Godspell. Three um, things I pray. Things I pray. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what have I been? I mean, I've been I've been playing mandolin recently. Uh, Fantastic. Yeah, so I've been really trying to get better at that and accompanying myself. Okay. Um, since I couldn't really play with anybody over the pandemic, so um, I of course can play classics such as "Just a Girl" by No Doubt, "White Rabbit," um, and uh, I've been playing some Heart. Uh, I wish I was like good enough to play like all of the parts in heart on my mandolin but um you know that's I can exciting at least, i can at least rock out on my mandolin and that makes me you're feel gonna good. have to do something in a, in a few moments okay what's this oh, again okay. this is the pack is this the this pack theater pack this is my improv team nuisance and hopefully at some point we're coming back in february hopefully okay um so this is a house team at the pack theater we're called nuisance and we were doing some I have to sort come of like, see you. I will, uh, by the way. I will absolutely. I'll be right up in front giving you a big stupid smile looking like a dork. And I'll be like, you go, Christed. And I'll scream for you and all that stuff. Okay. I will I will say that improv is one of the delights of my life. Uh, much like singing. Um, you know, if I if I were doing it regularly, I'd be a much happier person. Sure. So, so when I am doing it regularly, I am much more like in touch with 
uh, you know, who I am as an artist and all that stuff. And what's this thing? Now, is that, that Adam ruins everything in this little circle? Yes, that is. I recognized I him. Got, I and then this guy him. looks familiar. I don't know who he is. Okay, go uh, on. Who? Who? I, th I don't know this guy over here and then this lady kind of looks familiar i don't know i see a lot of comedians there so, are a lot of comedians yes uh i did actually drop out of the show because i got i had oh. a cold oh well then um, you can't do it right so exactly. yeah here's you with the kitty cat is this another one you've rescued because you you rescued i'm sorry i don't mean it to be so loud hon it's um my microphone is off i'm now using my phone for a lot of my work but this You're is hooked good. up for the video okay because sometimes it over modulates and um, it makes me aggravate it. Your You're little kitty too, cat. Not too this, loud for me. You look beautiful here. You look thank just you. beautiful here in both these photos. Thank you, thank you. You're just a beautiful young lady. Um, you. Okay, so we're gonna play games now. And this is called Good. Who Wore It Better? You know this game. <laughs> we just, we pick out who wore it better. Bitch stole my look as it used to be called on uh, Fashion Police. Yes, Dolce and Barkbana or Crispy Nugget. I mean, it's always going to be the dog in the hat. You think so? I'm always going to say a dog. So Dolce and Barkbana? Yeah. Who wore it better? Napoleon Bonaparte or Cat Sajak with a garbage bag yes, on his head? Cat Sajak. I mean, so was, miserable. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Was that, was that cat inconvenienced for that photo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But is that cat cuter than Napoleon? Yes, 100%. Okay, Who wore it one better? This one's Pug, hard. Pug Dark Holler or Holler, Holler, I don't know, or Patrick Swayze and Chris Farley in this skit, this very famous skit from Saturday Night Live from 1990. Now, there's a reason why I call it a skit. It's because Lauren Michaels does not like his sketches to be referred to as skits. And, um, and I don't like sketch. Every yeah. sketch comedian has adopted that pet peeve as well. Right. But I don't like when 14 year old girls are used as marketing tools and abused by people on Saturday Night Live. So I don't <laughs> care if I'm using the term skit. Yeah. <sighs> we I, talked about uh, that the lawsuit that day. I was like, are you kidding me? How I is also, it that NBC is allowed to still operate without that's that's. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. really gross. That's well, really apparently, gross. Apparently, you know, Chris Farley used to, used to joke. Well, he died around. in Chicago. Yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, you hear the stories all the time. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Didn't he yeah. die in Chicago right at the, um, right at the entrance of the Hancock building where I used to oh. work and people were telling me those stories. So, yeah. but you know, come on, it's, it's not okay. It never was okay. Yeah, no, it's been going on for a, yeah. forever. And yeah. yeah, you know, it's, I mean, it's why I've never particularly wanted to work there. Oh my you. gosh. Who wore it better? Andy Woofhole Andy Woof or Kristen Gull? I got to tell you, it's not the dog this time. It's you, sweetheart. Look at you. You look great there. Thanks. Thanks. thanks you do. Thanks. You Although Andy, there. you know, is giving me a run for my money. I'll see. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see what Thank else you. we got here. Okay. What song are these mice playing? <laughs> my Humps by Black Eyed Peas, Tutti Fruity <laughs> by Little Richard, Walk Like an Egyptian by The Bangles, or Up by Cardi B? Um, let's see. I think that they are just, I think they're up on the 2021 music of today. Okay. These are clearly little, uh, mice that watch TikTok obsessively <sighs> and, uh, you know, Hickory Dickory cool. Doc, the mice, um, have the app TikTok. Oh, look at that. <laughs> You're a poet. I am. Okay, so uh, who wore it better, the grumpy city gent Borson Wells or this woman showing off the size of her boyfriend's penis? Which, who wore it better? Is your screen running all over? Because I'm moving it. No, it's no, uh, no it's just in the no, corner. Okay, because no, I've been moving just, it. No, it's just full screen. It's showing me full screen. Oh, oh this was the ridiculous thing. And I left it. This was from another discussion I had. But this is the time that everybody gave um, uh, Stephen Colbert an award for using Zoom. I went, are you like, it's TV isn't a thing, guys. Six white guys, four white guys, and two white guys. Who got the best award for using Zoom this year? It was ridiculous. That's not even award. I'm not even getting into this. This drives me nuts. All guys, no women. It's, it's just, okay. Whose and boobs also, are these? And also the two black guys are like the white skin, the light skin black guys. Do you see, do you, where do you see one? Because I don't oh, see no, it. I just see. Slide. 
Oh, in the okay. next slide. Oh, and then oh, oh, right, yeah, this right, thing. Well, right. So I mean, I don't mean brains. to, I don't mean to villainize light-skinned black people. No, I know what you're about, saying. Though. But but you're saying I'm just that, saying like. They've got to be acceptable, you know. Right. They can't be too dark. They can't be a Lupita Nyong'o. Right, because God forbid that you you hear a woman's voice or someone who isn't a white male with old balls as you're going to sleep. Like, I don't understand. I, I, I never will. Okay, whose boobs are these? Of course, Jessica Rabbit. Okay, of course. See, this is where... This is what I'm like trying to, because I have a stand-up comedy routine that I've been working on. Eh, so, you know, some right. of it lands, some of it doesn't. And one of the things I do is whose boobs are these? Because we were raised at a time where we know people's boobs and there's nothing normal about that. And so then they wonder why we not only self objectify, but why we, and then you call us crazy when you self objective or when you objectify us, it, it's just, uh, it makes me angry. So you know whose boobs these, these are. Oh, yeah. These are, yeah. Okay. Easy. Who's, Just who's, grab it. Whose boobs are these? I think they're Beyonce's. That's right. Bing, 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 bing. Whose boobs are these? I think Freddie this is Spears, easy. Obviously. Bing, 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 bing. Whose boobs are these? Oompa Loompas. You got it, girl. You knew. You knew it was the Oompa Loompas. I love Four. it. I didn't. Four. It wasn't even for like half a second. Whose boobs are these? Okay. Uh, this is my favorite is dress of all time. Okay. Is it um the chick from Mad Men, the redhead? No. No, it's not. Then I don't I know. Not have ever Based seen on the this tattoo. Movie. Based on the tattoo. She actually though. doesn't have a tattoo in real life. Just in this movie. This was a movie. Oh. It's my favorite dress of all time. This is actually well, Madonna. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I. Uh, in the movie, who's that girl? I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have ever in a million years. I don't think you've ever seen that movie. Okay, nope. she's. It was very good. Whose boobs are these? Is it Vin Diesel or The Rock? No. Wow. Okay. Okay. Mark Wahlberg. All right. Do you not know who he is? I know who Marky Mark is. Okay. But I was a little, that was a little before my time. That's what I was thinking. I, so there we go. We played Whose Boobs Are These? Um, we um, yeah. discussed like, what you're doing. Well, now um, I'm like, I got to sing some day by day. Day by day. Day by day. Learn that one. I'm, Look I'm that one up think, later. I'm trying to think of like who else's boobs would I know? I'm mm -hmm. to... Dolly Parton. I usually do Dolly yeah. Parton and everybody knows it right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's a great uh, example of, you know, the Pam Andersons. Oh, thank you. That was one I had. Uh, Barbie. I can also put Barbie. Yeah, that's true. Um, trying to think of who other ones. But yeah, I did Vanna White. You know, that one was easy because there was a wheel behind her. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. Um, they're going to run out of the room. As soon as they figure out, I'm going to play. Okay. Are you not? Are you no longer afraid? Are you no longer afraid of this? I'm going to turn I'm off shocked. my microphone so I don't go <coughs> or anything. I'm shocked. Oh, I just saw your boobs. Whose boobs are those? Those are Kristen's. Oh, yeah. You know, well. Take this pink ribbon off my eyes. I'm exposed. It's no big surprise. Don't you think I know exactly where I stand? This world is forcing me to hold your hand. Cause I'm I'm just a girl. I'd rather not be. Cause they all sit and stare with their totally blanking on the lyrics but that's a song that's a song that i know and, oh, and it goes love, i've had love too here here i love that i've been practicing um although i'm terrible and i can't keep up money for nothing can you do that one i'll do a little i can do a little bit of the heart um Oh, that's good, hon. There 
there we go. I did it right. That was fantastic. That was, right. that was, that was, that was spot on. You got it. Thanks, like you nailed thanks. it. Yeah, you did. I can there even do a little bit of, if I still have time, we might still fly. Every time I think about it, I want to cry. Problems with the devil and the kids keep coming. So we gotta breathe easy, no time to be up. practice a little bit more but you know this it's is so good i love it i just i could just sit here and let you sing to me all day i mean you know i i mean i have to practice so uh, we could do that we could do more that. fun to another thing an audience um, so I've met lots of people that were, were actors, are actors, were comedians, are comedians, were musicians, are musicians. And because technology is kind of like really <laughs> like saturated the market. So I was talking to this one guy and I realized we need to open an empathy center for people that thought they could be the Beatles or thought that they could be Meryl Streep or thought that they could be Jerry Seinfeld only because those things don't exist anymore. Right. Everything has a short shelf life. And, and I've got to tell you, I don't think that the Beatles, that caliber was ever really healthy or normal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think I, you're I, supposed to ever be Elvis. Right. Like in a way, because the market was so mono, like society experienced just one sort of version of entertainment at a certain time because there were only so many channels uh on tv and so many newspapers and so many you know things that require money uh to have a literal platform you know like there's there's maybe you know a difference in how things are funded and the longevity because like we used to you know look at what we did to judy garland and yeah. marilyn monroe like yeah. you know they're the you know they're the uh stars that were drugged up to you know keep awake and to go to sleep because they were because they didn't have a life you know all their all, their whole life was working and a, a gun at their um, heels going dance judy dance yeah dance exactly uh, right and you know and, that famous quote from her about dreaming about becoming an actress is a lot a lot more satisfying than actually being an actress well especially when first of all we know how hollywood works because of weinstein mm -hmm. and only it was what kazan and mgm you know like see this is where and then i look at people that were popular over the past 20 years and i go what kind of degenerate are you that you let somebody be sacrificed so that you could turn your and look the other way do you know what i'm yeah. saying i don't think that if if you became famous in the past 20 years i don't think that that was a blessing you may have had some yeah. money uh, but i think it's more of a curse I feel like those of us that um, were not able to ever become huge stars, I think we're better off. And you yeah. and I have been discussing that before. Yeah, well, especially um, given the whole Britney thing, like, you know, I'll, to, to go back to kind of the, the idols of, you know, my youth since, uh, like, Britney is was the first concert that I ever went to was Britney and I was like 12. And so, you know, looking back, I totally see like how problematic it is for a 12 year old to be like to want to be Britney Spears. Yeah. But also Britney was what, like 18 at the time that I started liking her or 16 at the time that I started liking her. And so it's like not only is that extremely damaging to look at like this person is is my peer or yeah. my older cousin or something you know like they're only a few years older than me or whatever and they're somebody to look up to 
meanwhile they're being totally exploited yeah and and i i what makes me angry is around that time like uh, what was it oh one through oh eight i was in top 40 radio yeah which is very tied into that yeah. and so i fed into that right but you it know was also whoever like i would have been in 2001 i'm very different you know it's 20 years later but to think that i fed into that that i helped yeah. but we all did i mean we all facilitated it we all did i mean you know we when we know better we do better right so like if we knew that if i knew that you know liking britney would you know buy the coffin for her to be buried in yeah. you know like that you know i i didn't want to i didn't want to be part of like building a jail for her to live in um guarded by her like crazy ass dad who wasn't even there for her when she was like a child just don't think the entertainment industry is anything really that kids should be part of and i always felt that way and i remember when i worked at kiss we had macaulay culkin had come in and at this point i think he was 25 30 and so of course he had that big famous you know um home alone period and then he came in he i think he was in that movie with uh, mandy moore it was mm -hmm. the religious one i can't remember what it's called do you remember that one? Uh, uh, Mandy Moore plays like a, I can't even remember. But anyway, he came in. He was to remember, was he? No. Anyway, Macaulay Culkin was like, no, 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 no. He's like, I, so many years of depression. Also, I'm typecast, so I can't just go out. And I also can't just go get a regular job because oh I can't God. go work at the Carl's Jr. because people will come in and they go, you, you know, you're... <laughs> Macaulay. So he, you know, he, not that I, we didn't already know that, but here I was, you know, talking to someone, he said, no, no, no. And so when I had moved out here, I, I was over by Anaheim at a hotel because I had taken my kids over to Disneyland mm -hmm. and we were staying. And I met this woman and her daughter in the pool and I felt bad. And I told, she was telling me about how she spends 3000 a year to send her daughter through some agency, mm -hmm. but it sounded like a scam. Because yeah. I said, well, how many, you know, what have you booked? Like, what have been your gigs? Oh, well, I haven't. And I was like, okay, well, how, and I was, I met the girl and I was like, I don't think she's really an act. I think this is one of those, ta those talent scams. You pay us yeah. 3000. We put your, you know, we print up a book, which costs nothing, you know, like yeah. with headshots, it costs, costs an agency about 50 bucks, hand it to you. And then we never get you any gigs, but you continue to pay us. So I told her, don't, if you're not, that's not even how it works anyway. Yeah they get a percentage of the gigs that they send you out. You don't pay them and then wait around. It, it just doesn't work that way. So I was feeling bad and I said, well, why do you want your daughter to be an actress? Well, because Disney Channel, because of, you know, Nickelodeon. Like, why do you want her to be in a box? And, yeah. and then I said, you know what, stop doing this. If your daughter really wants to do this, she could do it herself. There's TikTok now. Mm -hmm. You do YouTube, just do it that way. Don't, don't pay these middle. I think it was a scam. It sounded oh, like yeah. a scam to me. I mean, there's plenty of people who are willing to take advantage of people who with hopes and dreams. It's right. like, that's all you need is a hook. And there you go. They come, they come pre-hooked. All you got to do is hook them to your line. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like, okay, well, uh, same with a lot of acting classes, to be honest. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like a lot of times, it's make believe. How hard can it be? Give me a break already. I mean, it's it's well, it's not even like that. It's you like know. you can like you know, there's some good acting teachers and stuff. Sure. But at the same time, a lot of those whole things exist because an agent or a couple agents and a couple managers they know that like they can pick from that pool, and then everybody hears, oh, if you go and study with so and so you can sign with a with a big agent or a big manager or something. Right. So it's not even really about the acting classes. It's mm -hmm. like, who who can you get on your team that will get you to the next level? And a lot of, a lot of crap um, because I used to work for one of those uh, acting places and I heard the way that the teachers speak about their students on the phone, yeah. which they talk yeah. about them like they're objects mm -hmm. you know they're a product and it's just like the more i yeah. got into like the hollywood thing i'm just like wow like i really kind of like got into this because i like theater 
and this isn't really theater. Right. Um, you know, I like there's just like a like you were saying, like going and seeing live theater, like there's a community. It's like I'm not religious anymore. So it's like the closest thing that I have. I go to back church. and forth. Sometimes I am, sometimes yeah. I'm not. I yeah, I, I'm a I'm a kooky one, but go on. Well, I'll say that like theater is my church, you know, it's like where I go to be with my people and to no, I love going locally out here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't I have not turned on my television in over a year, hun. Nothing. I mean, I mostly watch YouTube anyway. <laughs> I did not know that Amy Schumer was the spokesperson for Tampax. It, 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 I didn't know this. And I'm over at the hotel where I was working and they did have the TV on at the bar. And I walked by and I went, what the? But I won't buy anything that's uh, sponsored by a celebrity. That's as a, as a person who has auditioned for commercials yeah. and not ever booked anything, but has gotten to like the callback process. And I, which means I've been told by my agents, like, that means that they just don't know you enough yeah. to give you a job. So yeah. like. I was told it's a dream that no longer exists. Not that I was doing it, but I had, a, I met my neighbor because, you know, I'm up in Santa Clarita. He said, no, oh, don't go down there. Anything, just do it yourself or, or go to one of these. Or if you want to be an extra, there's enough every day, honey, I walk past the film set here in Santa Clarita. They film so much. And then we have a bunch of warehouses and it's all, they've always got them. all those yellow signs with those. Mm -hmm. arrows they're all over santa clarita he goes you don't even have to go anywhere south just stay up here you got you know just go and, and there's eight you just go in there and uh dayton ohio do you know about dayton ohio no i don't they but... just bought a two hundred and ten thousand square foot um manufacturing building that had been empty mm -hmm. uh this company it's called uh, 1913 and they're mm -hmm. making it new the new hollywood in dayton ohio because it's too expensive in California and they don't need to be here. So right. Dayton, Ohio is, <laughs> I know, so you might have to pack up and I might be leaving California anyway, so you can come with me, okay? Well, I'll take you back to the Midwest with me. All right, well. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, what I heard. Dayton, Ohio is gonna be the new Hollywood by like 2025. I mean, you know, I nothing surprises me anymore. So that's where I'm at. But you're great um, at the live theater and I'm going to come see you and um, everyone should come see you. And so you, yes. you, you please let me know when you're doing that. Oh, we're hoping that February is when the pack will come back and that we'll have uh, house teams recur. And, uh, you know, it's one of my favorite things to do just as a person, as a human being. It's kind of like my therapy, let alone, you know, making me a better actor or whatever. It just makes me a faster thinker as a human so you're very talented um, oh thank you you're my well, favorite you're my look if nobody ever tell you're like a oh, stupid joanne she's such a she's such a weirdo no. but uh, you'll always be a star to me hun you don't need no. one of those first of We're, all the Ho hollywood walk of fame that's like it's a homeless man's pillow how is that an honor no how can you feel I good mean, about having one of those when there's a guy sleeping next to it like i wouldn't be able to i realized i i, I can't I can't be a sociopath. And I realize you're not one either. Yeah. I but I'm recognizing the people that I once admired are. This Absolutely. Is this is the cult that we belong to. And, you know, in other societies, it's not that weird to, you know, live at home with your parents until you get married or whatever uh, the case may be. Hold hands with the same sex or, you know, just stuff like that it's you know normal is what we make it and i think that we don't have we are starting to realize that the gatekeepers the people at the top who made these rules or are upkeeping upholding these rules they're just humans as, as well and mm. now that we all kind of have our own but you, to get up there you can't be you can't actually be human that means you have to look away and pretend things don't exist. Well, yeah, because you have to lose, you have to sacrifice some of your own humanity in order to- Compartmentalizing is one thing. Letting people suffer. I mean- Sacrificing the health and well-being of people, which is how I started. met you. So don't get me started on that because yeah, I, you showed me that someone I once idolized doesn't care about the health and well-being of women. Yeah. It's more about clicks or covering it up or shh, don't tell anyone I screwed up. See that yeah. that doesn't that doesn't fly with me. 
you know, I think that Maybe. I was watching you beg for help and they, everyone over there was ignoring you. Maybe because it was like, maybe because of there's, there's lawyers involved or something saying you can't. 35 women have come forward now. No, they, honey, like, they were looking the other way and they were going to sacrifice the health and well-being. And what they did was they re-traumatized about 35 people that had yeah. previous experience with a particular individual. How is it that you are so disordered, you don't recognize disorder? I wonder, Joanne, I have a lot of, um, as I've told you, uh, since that article came out, people have come forward to me. Mm -hmm. And I have, uh, I have like, I have their letters. Yeah. And I wonder, like, has anyone come and said, thank you for taking care of this gigantic mess that we left behind? Yes, I've gotten thank you letters from victims okay. because not they said victims, not from the people that that yeah, were more not, than willing to bandwagon and, and, and put PR and promotion behind a particular person. And know, if it was a woman, by the way, that was signed or a woman that was with that team, they would have done a background check so extensive they would know what color her pubic hair was and whether yeah. she and what kind of and what kind of uh, underwear she wears. But with men, they don't do that. And if this makes me angry or sound bitter, I don't care. I am angry and I am bitter because yeah. no one should be sitting there begging for help online and having a whole group of people look the other way, which is exactly what they did. It took five, five seconds for me to go, hey, hon, are you okay? What's going on? Right? Yeah. Isn't that how I mean, we met? Because I said, wait a minute, what's going on here? Are you okay? I believe yep. you. Tell me what's going on. Nobody? Yep. You got a whole group of people over there? Mm -hmm. And it took, yeah, it took, it took at least 12 Sarah Lawrence college educated, like For two years. Yeah. You know, it, it was, it was, uh, it was an effort that was really doubled once he, um, cause I think he produced that stuff. Um, and that was when we got the attention of, uh, Weinstein Slayer, Kim Masters. So I owe all of, you know, all this of the This is what I don't understand. To the Hollywood Reporter. I'll be, I, I don't know. I don't know how exactly it went down, but I don't know who Conan hires to work with him who does not know their boss. Now, I don't know Conan. I've been a fan of his. I wanted to marry him. It's one of the reasons, you know, a million years ago in 1993. Okay, all of that. But I've seen Conan flick a vibrator off his desk on the show. He's a safe space. So how do you let somebody like this guy who has a past like this get anywhere near your meal ticket, which is Conan? I mean, I definitely... Like how, do you, how, how bad are you at your job? that you don't know that this is, I mean, I'm not saying I know that maybe he was fine with it. I don't know, but I just don't see him as that type. So how bad are you that you go? Yeah, let's take the guy with the ducks who has, you know, this, this Facebook page over here of really upset, angry women. And let's, mm -hmm. let's have him connected with, uh, with Conan of all people. He's like the least rapey guy in the whole world, right? He's well, a safe I space. So I don't I get who, do, who, do, who, who, who has a full-time job and gets paid well and and does that the same people that created quibi that doesn't exist anymore like how yeah. how incompetent is hollywood how sleazy are these people there's 35 I, women any i agree like, i mean it's it's like how how did how how was horatio sands uh, and jimmy fallon like it's not hard to figure out people's attitudes towards women yeah, based it's on that how they don't like they us. Them. They hate us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, they want us dead. Yes. Yes. That's why we're getting killed constantly and being beat up constantly by our lovers. Um, yeah, no, it's it's very apparent the way that people feel about women because of the way that they dismiss us as equal people. They don't care about they us. Really don't care. They don't. And you know, it's people like, show you who are, who they are. They will I show guess you I'm the are. idiot for voting, yeah. you know? <laughs> Whatever. No, people will show you who they are over time. I mean, I it was worth it just to get Trump out because I was waking up with the everyone was waking up with the You're not gonna believe this, but I more and more I'm start going, maybe I would in 2024. I'm I know, I know. This is something I've been rattling around in my head. I know. 
I know. I can't believe I'm saying it myself. But I, I the other day, I was like, well, let me look at this uh, a little differently. You really like to stretch your mind in ways. I do. I, I do. I have a rigid moral. And I thought I was like the biggest anti-Trumpster. But then again, I was like, well, capitalism, see, capitalism. He was right about fake news. And I knew that at the time. I mean. I knew what he was talking about. And then the other thing that he that he got a lot of flack for, I'm not defending him by any means, honey. Uh, when he finally did that Susan B. Anthony thing, it's like, can we just give him one thing? Because every day it's just your cause, you know, and it's like he's doing something nice for women. For the for, I don't know if it's the first time in his life or whatever, but everybody like attacked him. And I was like, oh, just, really? Okay, now we're just being petty. There's a, there'll be something tomorrow we can <laughs> criticize him for. I you know, mean, stuff can like you that. be petty? Can you be petty about rape, though? Uh, no, no, honey. I mean, and no. he. I'm done with that. I, I, I've spent my whole life having to have that whole culture shoved in my face, and I'm done. And every woman well, I know, and then, like you had said, there's a whole bunch of women out there who don't even realize that they, they could have said no. There's a bunch of women groomed to point. not understand that their purpose on the planet isn't to be visually pleasing, their purpose on the planet isn't to serve men or be sex objects or to cater to them. There are women that still don't know that. They think they have to be pretty. They think they have to put their makeup on every day. Mm -hmm. They think that if a guy buys them a dinner, which where is that guy, by the way, if they buy him a steak dinner that they have to put out, you know, you ho, you go or whatever. No. Not all men, not all men. No, it's okay. No, it's uh, not, not right. But well, you're um, lovely. You're talented. You're gorgeous. You're everything. And you're brave I'm really and trying, you're strong. I'm, I'm really trying to not rag on men so much. I know. I, I do too. I do too, because I don't want to, because I'm not a misandrist and I do give benefit of the doubt, but how many times can you run into the same situation where doing all the right things, you're punished. And then if you call out someone, not that it's, it's not yeah. my job to police men. It's not my job to teach them how to, to, you know, be certain ways, but then yeah. you're like, okay, this is, doesn't make sense. You're over there and you're being rewarded, celebrated, you, you, you know, all of that for doing the basic minimum. Right. Yeah. I mean, Stephen, I'm sorry. I don't mean to rag on Stephen Colbert. I'm not trying to bully him, but he was just on zoom. Whoa. Right. We, they blow that up as Emmy nominated worthiness when yeah. everybody in the country was on like, the, you know, Oh, oh yeah. he tied his shoe. Oh, let's give him gold statues. Like, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like how, you know, we honor these people as gods while they're not, you know, the, the teachers who got up every day and did zoom class are like really working hard, you know? Yeah. Like somebody said, Oh, Joanne, you're just jealous of Conan. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yeah. I've yeah, always been jealous. No, because... no woman has ever had his job. Right. And they said, you're jealous of him. Correct. That's what I have been saying for 28 well, yeah. years. I'm jealous. Correct. I'm trying to do that and you're not letting me someone is blocking me so yes you yeah. are correct yeah. guilty is charged help yeah, exactly. me get to this thing that i'm trying to do yeah right i mean you know i and this is the other thing too now if you think it's so easy you go do it. and i will point out i did there's a radio news anchor a radio co-host six times on morning shows on wacky morning shows yeah four to six hours live per day, no edits. I didn't have a cast of people writing jokes for me. I had to run my yeah. own equipment, taking phone calls. I, I don't even want to hear it. He's reading, right. off, he's reading off cue cards. Give me a break. I agree. Give me a I break. A hundred percent agree. Um, it's been yeah. a woman. It's been a woman the past 10 years. That Lori, that one I saw over at Improv, who's very good. She's very funny. I didn't oh, know Lori she Kilmartin. wrote for Conan. Lori Kilmartin, yeah. yeah. Yeah, every funny thing he's ever said, it's come out of her, it's come from her head. So I performed with her. I opened. Oh, you for did. Her. Okay. She's very funny. I, I not wonderful. knowing that she, she was Conan's writer. I, I went, I was at improv when I first moved here. She did well, some joke in the bathroom or something to me, like kill yourself tomorrow. Or so, I, I don't know whatever it was. I was like, Oh, do I look sad? She's like, no, but just wait till tomorrow. You know, like put it <laughs> off, to, procrastinate till tomorrow or some joke. It was very funny, but she was the host that night. And then later I found out that she was the writer. And I was like, what? I was like, how come I don't know that? They She's see, amazing. She is. She's really funny. She's really good. She's wonderful. She's amazing. And she's a real person. You know? Um, and also, wasn't it um, 
David Letterman's girlfriend that he cheated on a million times. She was like the head writer for the for the late show before Colbert. Elaine Boozler? Is that who you're thinking of? I'm not thinking of Elaine Boozler. Where's I'm Bonnie Hunt? What happened to her? Meryl no, Who's Meryl Mar Meryl oh. Meryl Marco. I don't know. She was David Letterman's uh girlfriend for a long time. Oh, I thought and Elaine Boozler. Also but also, I shouldn't just say he, she was the girlfriend of David Letterman. She was the head writer of oh. The Late Show and was the reason David Letterman was funny. <laughs> I know what they do to older ladies. I was, I was abused as a child, so I'm like, there's no hell you can show me that I don't know already, to quote Elvis Costello. So... You'll come That's to Dayton with me a couple years. I'll visit. Got a couple more years here in California. I'll take you. We'll, 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 here's what we'll do. We'll be like the old hobos in, in those uh, when Tom and Jerry cool. cartoons. And we'll jump on the train as it's, you know, we'll chase it down. And we'll jump in the empty car. With, with our, our little uh, bundles. Sacks, right. Our sacks. Bindles, our stick and bindles. Oh, is that what they, it's called? It's, a, it's called a stick and a bindle, baby. And then. Yeah. Get the guitar. Yeah, just... You'll have your ukulele or whatever that is. Mandel yeah. man, man. My mandolin. Thing. Yeah, I can busk. And I'll there play G because it's the only chord I know. Hey, G comes G comes in quite it's in like handy. It's like the only one I can remember anymore. G comes in handy more than you'd think. You G are my like, sunshine. Just G stay in like, G. G. G is like 50% of all songs. That's it, here's, right. Here's, That's why I know my, that. Here's my bindle. Here's my bindle uh, bandana. Oh my gosh, you're sweet. You're a kitty patootie. <laughs> okay, so next time you have a show, you let me know. You text me right away. I will. And okay. also, we'll we'll just have to get together and just... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We can do that. Absolutely. Get into yeah. trouble. Not I'll come trouble. out by you, though. I'll come out by you. I don't want you traveling okay. all the way up here. Or we can, really you know far. what? We can meet in the middle. Mm -hmm. I think the middle is LA. Yeah, I think so. I think hey, it is. I know, hey, I know a lot of places over there. Okay. That would be cool. <laughs> I used to live over there. Okay. Okay. Have a wonderful night. It was really great to talk to you. You too, honey. And uh, have a wonderful weekend. And if I don't talk to you, Merry before, Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas. I gotta Happy tell you something. I have to rip before we go. Last year, this guy broke into my house on the twenty fourth into the twenty fifth. It it's it absolutely terrified my whole family. But he didn't take anything. He just left stuff. And then a couple of days later, you know what? I saw him ringing a bell uh -huh. in downtown. And the same thing happened the year before that, too. On the 24th to the 25th, some guy broke into my house. He just left packages. Merry Christmas. Okay. All right. Merry Bye. Christmas. Bye. Bye. Happy